Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Deal With It. This is going to be a very sobering and very powerful teaching. I say powerful because the Word of God is powerful. Um, I'm really hearing a word from the Spirit of God in this last and final hours. Um, literally, the Holy Spirit is going through us all <clears throat> who desire to be counted worthy. And, and focus in when I say who desire to be counted worthy to escape all that is coming upon the face of the earth. Um, whew, this, is, this is something you guys will see why. Um, I refer back to when I said... Um, when someone is a preacher or a teacher, a minister of the Word of God, the Word cuts us first. And too often, leaders or teachers or preachers can preach at others, but then remember how they say when you're pointing, and this is just a, a saying, but it's a true saying, your own thumb points back at you and three other fingers. You see that? And for some reason, we think that pastors and preachers are above correction but that's nowhere in the word of God there's that's nowhere in the word of the Lord we are all we are all subject to the word of God in chastisement correction instructions and righteousness and the ones who have to make sure they are right above all are people who teach the word of God Yes, indeed, because that's why we have a mess now, because we have preachers and leaders and ministers who have sin in their camps, a bunch of sin in the church, and there's nothing really profoundly impacting the congregation or the, the, the saints of the Lord, the Christians, because in order to be the most impactful, you have to have a clean vessel, there's no getting around it. The more you allow the Holy Spirit to purge and cleanse and wash you, the more effective the Holy Spirit will use you. Because after all, it's not us. But the Bible says to make ourselves vessels fit for the master's use. Amen. And that's what we, if we are truly lovers of the Lord. And when I say lovers, Jesus said, the way you show me you love me is to obey me. Obey my word. Amen, you all. Amen. Okay, so we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you that your Holy Spirit is the one you said teaches us all truth and all things that pertain to life and godliness. I thank you, Lord God. You told us to study for ourselves, a workman, not a shame, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, that that is what I set my entire being to do. And when I'm wrong, I say, oh, I missed it, you guys, or that wasn't right. And I thank you, Father God, because the thing is, are we intentionally teaching error versus being in error or teaching something that's not clear or not completely right? Hallelujah. So, Father, I thank you so much that you are the one who judges the heart. Yes, Lord, you are. We never have to worry about man's opinions, the opinions of others of us, not when we know we have a heart that is purpose to stay humble, to walk what we teach and preach, or what we uh, uh, say to others, that we examine ourselves first. So, Father, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that your Holy Spirit will truly anoint me, truly help me to show the urgency of this word, because without this word, none of us is going to make it. And they will understand when I give them the scriptures why I say that. Um, for instance, when you say you're coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle, you mean that, you mean that, you mean that. So, Father, I thank you that you will help us all who, who desire to please you, to give the highest form of worship, which is our obedience, you, taking our will 
to do your will in every area of our lives. And when we fall short, we, can, we, we confess it. We come clean. Ask for your forgiveness and your cleansing, your strengthening, and your washing. Amen. I ask this in Jesus' name. Lead those here who are really thirsting and hungering after righteousness. Because Holy Spirit, you said you'll fill them. You will fill them. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you all. <clears throat> this message is going to be titled, Woo! Mm, 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 mm. Confess your sins one to another. Amen? Confess our sins one to another. Okay, keep that in the forefront of your mind, and you're going to see why. The purpose for doing that is absolutely powerful, profound, and very needy. Very needy. Very needed. That's why we are needy. <laughs> Very needed, you guys, because it does so much for us. One, it is a form of serious, pure uh, humility. Mm -hmm. When you can admit and say the words, I was wrong, forgive me, and allow the Holy Spirit and others who have a right intentions of rebuking us and giving us some admonishment, because we're supposed to do that for each other, in a respectful and loving way. Now, sometimes it's not going to always come out loving, but you have to know the heart of the person that's talking to you. My God, I once had a pastor, Pastor Diane Abergel, oh yes, and I'll never forget her. Seven years in that ministry, <clears throat> it's difficult to be corrected or like when somebody says, oh, you're not right, you're just wrong. And you can be wrong. You can be wrong. It is hard to receive correction for someone who has jealousy in their hearts against you. And they're actually rejoicing that you're wrong. Amen? But if you know the heart of the person, that their heart is for you because their heart is for the Lord, we should be able to receive <clears throat> admonishment, correction, and rebuke from others who are truly, notice I said, who are truly in the body of Christ. Because the Bible says, submit one to another. So if someone corrects me and they say, oh, Marcia, that's not the right heart, sister. You're not right. I'm going to listen to them. When I know they have a heart for me, I'm going to bow to the spirit of Christ and that brother or sister in Christ. Oh, yes, the Christ in them. Amen? Okay, you guys, this, this word here, this is a serious banger right here. This is, this is no joke. This is for everybody. Everybody? Everybody. Okay, get out your Bibles. I had to take out a lot of my things because, boy, I was getting lost. Get out your Bibles, please, and follow along with me. I'm going to read from the Hebrew because more and more, I'm seeing that it puts it plain and clear. Even a child can perceive, comprehend, and understand. And the father told us to be like a child at heart. Children are the most humblest beings in the earth. Oh, yes. That's why Jesus said, unless you come like one of these little ones, you're not going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So keep that in the front of your minds. I am sensing the Lord gave me this word at least seven, eight years ago. He said the last move of the spirit of Yahweh, the spirit of Jesus Christ, will be done through humble vessels. I'm pause. The last move of the almighty Yahweh will be done through humble vessels. Yes, it's not going to be done by the big namers, the big ballers the big eyes and, 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 and the big T's. No, 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 no. Because it was never about any of us. It is about the Holy Son of Yahweh, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. And I can book it for you. When Peter, John, Peter, John, and James, I believe, Peter, John, and I believe it was. I know it was Peter and John. Anyway, they was on the Mount of Transfiguration. 
and they were amazed with the Lord because he was glowing. He was in his glory. And Peter said, let us build a tent, one for you and one for us. And two people think angels. They could have been. Some people think it was um, Elijah and um, Elijah and um, I know one is Elijah and I think it was Elijah. <clears throat> but the fact that I want you to hear is God's voice spoke from heaven because Peter was running his mouth. And see, we can all do that. If we're honest, we can get too excited when we need to shut up and listen. Yes, it's true. I know I'm guilty of it. I, I think we all are. We don't mean any harm, but we're causing harm. It's, it's one thing to mean harm, and it's another thing to cause harm unknowingly because we get so excited. That's all. Peter was just very excited, too excited, because it, there's times in our lives when we need to be quiet and sober and listen with the inner ear and with our hearts and our spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Out of heaven, the third heaven, the voice of Yahweh came and said, this is my son. Listen to him. Mm -hmm. Because Peter was talking and, and he had that struggle at times, you guys. And we all do who have that type of personality and character. I know I do. Yes. You could just be too excited and in the flesh and you not even know it. You not even know it. So anyway, this is about us becoming more like God through Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Praise God. Little house cleaning there. Little house cleaning. <laughs> Jesus, this word is something. Turn in your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And I'm going to start at verse 14. But you continue in what you have learned and have become convicted of, recalling the people from whom you learned it and recalling to how from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which can give you the wisdom that leads to deliverance through trusting in yeshua the messiah now the key word here is continue because somehow some way even in the king james um, interpretation it does not press nor emphasize we must continue in Christ. We must continue daily in the word of God. Continue in prayer. Add fasting to our lives. Okay? And you're going to see why. We're not going to make it without allowing, and, and, and another key word, thank you, Holy Spirit, convinced. Okay? Uh, another key word is Wisdom that leads to deliverance through trusting in Yeshua. Because, see, I know that the Lord showed me this. God's way inside of these tents and dealing with this sin nature in us, there's, there's a constant war, you all, from the flesh nature against the spirit. And that's why it is a continued processing of being renewed renewed in our minds by the transforming of God's word. The mind is at enmity. It's an enemy of God. If you read your word, you would know that our sinful minds in its fallen state does not love the mind of God. It'll never love it. Never, never. True holiness cannot love sin and a sinful mind will never love holiness. They are in a constant war with each other. Amen. Okay. Verse 16. All scripture is given, breathed, and is valuable. I'm going to start that over. All scripture is given, breathed, and valuable for teaching the truth. Convicting of sin. I need you all to hear that. Every last one of us. One of us convicting of sin and and remember he's teaching and speaking to 
those who name the name of Christ as Messiah, as, the, as, the, as their Lord and their Savior. Amen? Convicting of sin. Correcting faults. See how plain this reads? The, James, the King James Version, it's unfortunate, but that's okay because the Lord has someone put it in Hebrew. It's not the Hebrew language, but it's the clearest and purest interpretation of the Hebrew language. Amen? It is. It doesn't read like this in the King James Version. You really can't see yourself like you see yourself in the Hebrew with the King James Version. When you read this, because the word is for us first. The Bible says, get the beam out of your own eye first. Then you'll see clear to get the little stick out of your brother or sister's eye. This is why we must be humble. We must stay in a humble mind and heart. Because we're going to be found out. Let me, let me keep going. Help me, Lord. Okay. Convicting of sin. Correcting faults and training in right living. I, I have never read it so clear in my entire life it, when I've started reading the Bible. I, that is, you cannot pretend you don't know what this means. And this is why I keep emphasizing there is no one saved, always saved doctrine. That is doctrines of demons. Because if we are all together ready to go, I'm pausing. Why would it say it is for teaching the truth, convicting of sin, correcting faults, and training? Training, when one is in training, it's a continued process. It's a continuing process. Training and right living. Thus, anyone who belongs to God may be fully equipped for every good work. And we wonder why folks ain't right. They're not fully equipped. They're not staying in the mirror of God's holy word. We can have things in us we think is good and we're over things. I'm going to get to mine. Remember the title of this message is Confess Your Sins One to Another. And the Lord just lit me up, convicted me, rebuked me, admonished me. Oh, yes, yeah, something tough. And I thank him for it. I thank him for it. Because the Bible tells us, God's word says he chastens those he loves. I don't want him to break any bones um, anymore. I would rather when he say stop it, stop it. Like how a parent tells a child who is being unruly and, 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 and misbehaving. Girl, I said, stop it. Or else. I don't want the or else from God. I want to be quick to obey him when I hear him clearly and stop it. Yep, I'm pausing because I'm telling you all, this is it. We are in the last hour, and I know that I know the Holy Spirit is taking what's called an astringent cleaner. You know, it's an, it's an you want to say it's a, abrasive because it's real strong and it's tough because it has to, it's like a, you got a stain and you have to, didn't he say he coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle? See, I know this is the Holy Spirit. It's an astringent, astringent cleaner. It, I mean, you have to rub it abrasively. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is what the Holy Spirit is doing in those who want to be counted worthy to escape all that is about to happen. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. A purifying. He said, let all those who have this hope purify themselves. This is what's happening to those of us who thought we was all together and lovely, I'm one of them. See, I'm going to tell on myself. I'm not going to tell on the devil and shame the devil. Tell on Marsha. This ain't the devil. This is my heart. This is an attitude the Holy Spirit saw in me, and I didn't see it. Because why? I justified a sister in Christ's attitude and behaviors towards me. And I thought I had the right because of their behavior, 
No, 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 no. That's not how it works with the Lord. No, 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 no. You're going to see. And I thank him for this. I want no hidden sin in my heart against not a soul. Not an enemy, especially not someone in the body of Christ, no matter how they're acting. It's my responsibility to cover them with love. We're going to get to that scripture. This is going to be a banger right here. Everybody going to locate themselves once again. He said, judge yourself and you won't be judged. That's what I'm doing. Oh, and I'm advising everyone else who has this hope. Come on, get in this, get on, get on this quickly. Because it's not worth it. Our pride and egos will get us right left behind and worse, busting hell wide open. I, I didn't come this far. Mm -mm, not this far with the Lord. It ain't worth it. No egotisticness of pride in us is worth it. No, <clears throat> I'd rather be humiliated, embarrassed. It doesn't matter to me. I'll do anything for you, Lord. Anything. It's not worth it. Okay. So, all scripture is, bre is breathed and is valuable for teaching the truth, convicting of sin, correcting faults, and training in right living. That anyone or thus anyone who belongs to God may be fully one. You see who belongs to God. Oh, this is a tight walk, you guys. This ain't no sloppy ogapi. This is not no one saved, always saved. Thus, anyone who belongs to God may be fully equipped for every good work. It says not for some, for most. It says every good work. Okay, so now let me go to the next one he told me to go to for the word of God. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. Thank you, Lord. Almighty God, I thank you. Chapter, vo chapter 4, verse 12. Okay. And he said to start at uh, verse 12. See... The word of God is alive. It is at work and is sharper than any doubled sword. It cuts right through to where soul, remember the soul, meets spirit, your own spirit, and joints meet marrow. Those are the bones and the blood in us. Okay? And it is quick to judge the inner reflections and attitudes. Don't I don't think we really understand how God sees through us. I don't think we understand when a person that you don't like and you think you love in somebody in the in the body of Christ and you have a very disrespectful tone towards them, a very nasty attitude towards them. The Lord is not having it. My previous teaching, it says respect for one another. It says render honor where honor is due. The Lord is not having none of this in heaven. He kicked it out of heaven. He kicked it out of his heaven. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go on. Quick to judge the inner reflection and attitudes of the heart. Yeah, remember I kept saying everything with the Lord is our heart. People can look at your outward physical appearance, but God cares nothing about that. Mm -mm. He looking at the chambers of your heart and into your, it says the, um, the mind. It says he's trying his children's hearts and minds. He, the word is the reins, which means the mind. God sees in our minds and God sees in our hearts. And he knows when we are being disrespectful towards one another and even him. See, this thing is tight. Oh, but it's all the way right. Okay. Before God, nothing created is hidden. I'm pausing. But all things are naked 
and open to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. So if you want to hold on to your egotistic ways, you do that. That is your business. And that is between you and the Lord. But as for me and my temple, I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to bow down and do what he, what thus saith the Lord. Yes. See, this is it, you guys. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where we really show we live in to do our will, living in carnality and lukewarmness. It's not going to cut it. You won't go up. Only a remnant is going up. The ones who got the spots and wrinkles out, laid aside the sins that was easily besetting us in the weights. I'm trying to tell you the truth. That's who he's coming for. Remember when I said, if you do all these things, I read it from Psalms, I think seven. Mm -hmm. Stay with me. Okay. It says to whom we must render an account. Therefore, since we have a great co Kohan, Kodol, that's a mean a witness in heaven. We have a, we have those looking at us. Believe it or not, they are. Mm -hmm. The other saints that have gone on, some of them are looking down at us saints, rooting for us to get it right, to do it God's way, because they did. That's why they up there. Yeah. And that's why them smart angels is up there too. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Who has passed through to the highest heaven. See how I just said that? They already there. We trying to make it there. Make sure we get there. Okay. Yes, Yeshua, the son of God in heaven. Yeshua, the son of God. Let us hold firmly to what we acknowledge as true. You see that? It's not enough you all to talk it. If you are holding fast to something, it is a lifestyle. It is in everything you do, including admitting when we're wrong. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I explained before, the, I really believe the Lord showed me the reason why he said David is a man after his own heart. When Nathan, the prophet Nathan came to confront David, King David. About his gross sins? Mm -mm. David didn't justify it. David didn't say, Nathan, who do you think you are? I don't care if you're a prophet. I'm the king. No. And see, that's how a lot of leaders are, pastors and Christians. Oh, yes. You can't tell them nothing. Okay. All righty then. Let's go on. Okie dokie. So it says here. Wow. Okay, let me get it right. Follow the Lord. Highest heaven, Yeshua, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we acknowledge as truth. For we do not have a Koham Golan unable. Okay, forgive me. We have a great Koham Koham. Godon, who has passed through to the highest of heavens. That is Jesus. Correction. I'm thinking of another scripture. Please forgive me. I'll start over. Therefore, since we have a great, great Koham Goldal, who has passed through to the highest heaven, that is Yeshua. Yeshua, the son of God, let us hold firmly to what we acknowledge as truth. As true, for we do not have a Koham Goldon unable to emphasize with our weaknesses. Do you see? See, this is why I'm, I'm trying to say the Lord knows when we are weak and struggling versus a habitual, sinning, disobedient, rebellious child of God. There's a big difference. They're not going to go. They're not going to go. It's one thing when we are struggling in something, amen, and we may not have full understanding versus when we are holding to our justifications, being rebellious and unteachable and unrepentive. 
We'll never make it. We'll never make it. Okay? Not in that rapture. As Fig Tree Ministry say, I honor him so much. I thank the Lord for the blessing that he is in the body of Christ. He said they will have their chance in the classroom called the tribulation. I, I don't want that chance. Ain't nothing wrong with it, but it's not the best. No, it's not. The best chance and opportunity is to get right right now. Amen. Mm -hmm, I'm going to pause. Okay. It says he's not unable to emphasize with our weaknesses. Since in every respect, he was tempted just as we are. Do you see that? Oh, wow. What a Savior. What a Lord. Jesus was tempted, you all, in all ways. We don't know of the ways he was tempted, but I'm just going to believe what thus saith the Lord. If you think there wasn't um, women that looked upon him and said, wow, I wonder if he could marry me or even Mary Magdalena. Who's to say? I'm not saying it happened. I'm just using my imagination. You think if we do it now, it says there's no new thing under the sun. Do you not think Mary Magdalena was beyond infatuated with Jesus? She was greatly moved and was thinking Who's to say? I'm not saying for sure, you all. I'm just using a rational example. She may have thought in her heart, wow, I would love to marry Jesus. Maybe. We don't know. But do you think no woman ever looked upon Jesus and didn't want to marry him and have him as a, an amazing husband? Guess what? He is our husband, but not in the physical sense, the spiritual Amen. Jesus had to have women looking at him like, wow, he is just so beautiful in the right way, the way that we wish men would be. Men who are beautiful because they are submitted to the spirit of Jesus Christ. Men who lead us spiritual in prayer and in the word of God. Oh, okay. So act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. That's okay. All righty. Let's go on. Don't be ridiculous. Yes, amen. It says he was tempted in all aspects like we are, but we are with sin. He is without sin. Okay. Therefore, let us confidently. See, this is what I love. This is why I could care less about how people look at me, um, their opinions, or even what they think about me. I, you guys, I don't care. What I care about is obeying the Lord and treating others very well, especially those who are of the household of the Lord, especially. But I am to treat everybody well. Okay, therefore, let us confidently approach the throne from which God gives grace. And I do believe he showed me what grace is. Grace and mercy is not the same thing, you all. Grace is an enablement. It is an, it is an empowering, an ability that comes from the Holy Ghost of God himself. Yep, I do believe that fully. Mercy is something we don't, um, we don't deserve. Neither is grace. But how can we live for him if he don't give us grace? How can you, how can you effectively impact someone without the enabling of the grace of the Holy Spirit. You can, we don't have that type of anointing. Matter of fact, the counterfeit anointing is people who are doing it in the flesh. But when the Holy Spirit sure enough anoints you, there's an authority, a power that comes from God Almighty himself. Okay. All righty then, let's go on so that we may receive mercy and find grace in our time of need. And I, and I know in the English language, I'm sure there is someone who is very um, capable in the English language. They can correct me. When, when you use in grammar and it is a separate thought, it means in addition also. So it says here, 
so that we may receive mercy and find grace in our time of need. You see that? When you are in a struggle of sin, you need God's mercy to forgive you and wash you and cleanse you. And then you need his grace to overcome that sin. <laughs> yes. And grace is an enablement. It is a power that comes from the Holy Ghost himself to overcome all temptation and sin. It is through the power. That's why there ain't, ain't no thing talking about no willpower. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's our will submitted to the will of the Holy Spirit. And then he gives us power over sin. That's why Jesus died, got up from that grave. And backing it on up, that's why he lived the perfect holy life. Thereby, we can live a holy life. Notice I didn't say perfect because there is none perfect but Jesus. Oh, stick with me because this is tight, but it's right. Amen. Oh, yes. Okay. To find grace in, in our time of need. The Lord is so good. Hallelujah. The Lord is so good. Okay, let me check that off, those two off, you guys. Stay with me. Help me, Lord. There's, this is so much. Okay, now, that was one, two. He said, start here with these two first. One, two. Okay. All right, let's go to James 5, 6. The book of James Chapter 5, verse 16. Wow, this is so much. There it is right here. Okay, you guys, James 5, 16 is so much. Uh, chapter 5, verse 16. Here we go. And remember, this is about confessing our sins one to another. Therefore, openly acknowledge... Therefore, openly acknowledge your sins, that's, that's plural, to one another. I'm going to read it again. James chapter 5, verse 16. Therefore, openly acknowledge your sins to one another and pray for each other. You know how when people, uh, they, they're carnal, and they're very, um, they're vicious. Yes, they are. And they are lukewarm. When they think they find out about something on you and they rejoice in that. Oh, I know I'm talking right. They think, mm, I knew she wasn't nothing. You know, when people think that they find out your sin and you be done already done repented of it, not even living like that anymore. Them folks is in a lot of trouble. And I'm, we're going to get to it. You're going to see. The Lord does not like that, you all. He does not. Okay. So he wants us to confess our sins one to another. Yes, he does. Now, I, I already talked about secrets. Uh-uh. You can't tell your secret sin to everybody. No, sir. No, Lord Jesus. Everyone is not packing that type of spiritual integrity where they, where they would never breathe it to another soul. Take it from me. I have experienced that, you all. I'm going to keep going. Praise the Lord. Okay. And pray for each other. Not gloat. Not run your mouth on another saint. So that you may be healed. And we wonder why maybe we're not being healed of things that have happened to us. When I tell you my personal experience, it's going to bless you. And I pray that it inspires you through the Holy Spirit in me to do the same. It's beyond refreshing and it's and it's causing healing to take place in me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. This is so revelation to me because I, I said, Lord, why does it still hurt? I didn't confess it to nobody. See, we think we are an island, an island unto ourselves. Oh, no, 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 no. The Bible says we are the body of Christ. 
Okay. And and we wonder why the Holy Spirit is in moving the way he really desires to in the brick and mortar churches. Ain't nobody confessing nothing. Oh, no, nothing. And that's why people are sick. People are dysfunctional. People are toxic. Yeah, yeah, yep, mm-hmm, yeah. Okay, and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Ain't this something? This is so profound. This is so profound. Elijah was only a human being like us, yet he prayed fervently that it might not rain. This is so, and we want the most profound miracles is getting ready to come through people who have a heart like Elijah. It says he was a man just like us. Yet he prayed fervently that he that it might not rain and no rain fell on the land for 3 years and 6 months. That that is so powerful. That that wow. Then he prayed again. And the heavens gave rain, and the land produced its crops. That's interesting because I believe this land is 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 human beings. Yep, I I I'm sure it was a literal um, event that happened because it is. But I'm learning that the word of God can have a dual meaning, and land can be us, our temple, our body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are barren and not producing the right fruit of the Holy Spirit because we have not forgiven and we're holding on to hurts and pains. And that's not that's why some of us are not healing or not healed. OK. All right. So let me go into my testimony to give glory to God. I recently confessed um, my sin of keeping a leisure uh, 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 a record of a sister in Christ who had done great harm to me, a lot of hurt, a lot of betrayal. And um, I confess to these two beautiful, precious sisters of mine, my sin. And I wanted them to hold me accountable because what I was doing, you all, I would be cooking, driving, just going about my day. And I would just start rehearsing what this person had done to me, this sister in Christ had done to me. And I would say, oh, wow. I would say, I'm, I'm talking to the Lord. And the Lord said, no, you're not talking to me because I don't keep a record of uh, my children's wrongs. Yeah, I'm paused. We can be so deluded, self-deluded, and think we are talking to the Lord about an individual or situation and literally think that God is engaging in, engaging in this. It really, it's lying. It's, I'm going to say it's lying on God because God is not in that, you all. When, 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 and, and, and then he said to me, so when he, he rebuked me and admonished me very sharply, and he says, so do you want me to keep a record of your sins? And I said, oh, Lord, no. No, oh, Lord, no, I do not. And he says, so, Marsha, stop it. Stop it. Let it go and truly forgive this sister. And I said, Lord, I will do it. I, I forgive her. I'm so sorry. I really didn't think that's what I was doing, but you are always right, and that is what I was doing. And our own pride and even arrogance, we can think we have really forgiven someone, but there is no way, if even if I don't come to you and ask for your forgiveness, it doesn't matter. He doesn't say, wait till they come and ask for forgiveness. Mm -mm. He said, forgive them 70 times 70. See, I'm a book it. 
But imagine if someone comes to you, like when we go to the Lord and we say, Lord, forgive me for lying. Forgive me for being unforgiven. Forgive me for masturbating. Forgive me for looking at pornography. Forgive me for not being kind. Amen. When we go to ask the Lord, the almighty God in Jesus' name to forgive us for our sins. How would you feel if God said, well, now you just asked me to forgive you for this and for that. There's no way we, we wouldn't even want to go to God. And I'm going to tell you who does that and who we are mimicking and being like when we keep a record of wrongs, the accuser. If you think that Satan don't remind God of our sins and where we fell short, you're mistaken. So when I was doing that to my sister in Christ, that's exactly who I was mimicking, the accuser. And that broke my heart. I have no, I have no right to do that. None of us do. None of us do. And so the bottom line is, you all, we better stop it and we better get right. We better stop keeping records of wrongs and harms. And that's why the Lord said you that's why you cry and that is why you're still hurting because you're keeping a record against your sister. But see somebody religious, they will tell you that's not God. Okay, I wouldn't find out. I wouldn't want to find out. I'm reading the word to you and now we're going to get to what love is, and then you tell me if that's not God when I'm reading his Bible, his holy word, his holy word. Okay, so let me cross out that. We are to confess our sins one to another. And let's go on over to, help me, Lord. I want to go to the next one you tell me. What love is, First Corinthians my goodness, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Yep, I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm booking it. Yep. What love is, 1 Corinthians. And I'm sure many of us have read this, but we cannot dare say we understand it because we're not doing it. Ain't that something? You can quote scriptures and know the word of God and not be putting them into practice. Oh, yes, we got to locate and judge ourselves so we won't be judged. Amen. And we have to quickly obey the Lord, quickly obey the Holy Spirit when he shows something to us in our hearts and in our mind and in our attitude towards each other. Yeah, even God. Okay. Woo! What love is? 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I've even, heard, I've even heard people say uh, 1 Corinthians is the love chapter. It's the chapter of love. Yeah, but when you get, when you get challenged by it, we going to see. Okay, let me make sure this is it, guys. Chapter 13. It might be 2 Corinthians chapter 13. And it is, you all. It's 2 Corinthians. Corinthians chapter, let me get it right, Lord, I have so many, please help me, Holy Spirit. Mm -mm 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 -mm. This is the love, the love chapter. First Corinthians, yes. It is. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'm sorry, y'all. Not 2 Corinthians. We have one after that's going to be in 2 Corinthians. It is 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Yes, it is. 13 chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 is the love chapter. Starts at verse 5. Actually, it started, we should just read probably from the beginning. Okay, yep, let's read from the beginning. That's, that's definitely what the Lord wants us to do. 
I may speak in tongues of men, even angels, but if I lack love, I have become merely blaring brass or cymbals clinging. I may have the gift of prophecy, and a lot of people have a lot of um, um, pride about the gifts of the Holy Spirit when they're not even theirs. They have a very, um, the Bible talks about him who has a proud look. The Lord don't want us like that, y'all. He don't want us like that. I may phantom all mysteries, know all things, have all faith enough to move mountains. But if I lack love, I am nothing. I'm going to pause right there. I may give away everything that I own. I may, I may even hand over my body to be burnt. But if I lack love second time, second time, I gain nothing. Once saved, always saved. And you think you can mistreat people and be disrespectful? Okay, because if you love someone, you're going to respect them. You're going to respect them, especially somebody in the body of Christ, another beloved saint. Really all, everyone we should respect and love. But the Bible said, especially be good to those who are of the household of God. Amen. Yep. Here we go. Love is patient and kind. Not jealous not jealous, not jealous, not boastful, not proud, rude, or selfish. And you know, that comes up to me. You got a lot of Christians um, backbiting, debating, competing. We better stop it. The Lord is not pleased when we do that. Mm -mm. That is of the world. That is carnal. That is a sin. That is a sin. It said, it said not prideful, not proud, rude, or selfish. And here's a big one. Not easily angered. You know, when we get offended, when somebody admonishes us or rebukes us or corrects us, Oh, wow. Mm -mm. It's not going to cut it, you all. We're not going to make the cut. And it keeps, here's where I got greatly convicted, lit up, and I thank him. For he says he disciplines, he chastens those he loves. Repentance is a great gift. It is the goodness of the Lord that leads us to repentance. Mm -hmm. So you see, there is no one saved, always saved. Mm -mm. Never been. And it keeps no records of wrong. Love does not gloat over other over other people's sins. That's a big one in the church. That's where a lot of gossip is coming from. Oh yes. Whoo, we're not gonna make it. But takes its delight. This is what love delights in. But takes its delight in the truth. When somebody begin to clean their life up. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that's what love does. Yeah, I'm pausing. Because you got a lot of Christians. They're vicious. And the Lord is not happy. He's not happy that you're treating another one of his children that way. Mm -mm. You may think you cute. You may think you all, you right in what you're doing. Oh, but the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right to a person, but the end is damnation. Mm -hmm. But takes delight in the truth. Love always bears up. Always trusts. Always hopes. And always endures. My God, love never ends, but pros prophecy will pass. 
So to me, what this tells me, the most important thing to Yahweh, to the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit is the pure love of God that we give to everyone. Yep, I'm going to wait right here in the water. The water of God's word. Tongues will cease. Knowledge will pass. For our knowledge is partial. So you got people who think they know everything and they be correcting folks that's been studying beyond years. Years, law, Jesus, and we want to disrespect folk like that. Okay, the Lord is not pleased. Yeah, okay. For our knowledge is partial and our prophesying or prophecy partial. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. And a lot of us are childish. Because children do the bickering and being jealous of each other. That is childish. Mainly the bickering. Because sometimes children, they do struggle with feeling, you know, uh, jealous of each other. They do. And that's where we have to teach them the difference. And that they should never be jealous of anyone. They should admire and celebrate someone that may be a faster runner, prettier, smarter, and have more things than them. We should just simply say, that's okay. Be proud of them. Be happy for them. Us adults, and especially us Christians, we are, we're worse than children. We're pathetic. Yep. We're ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Woo! I spoke like a child, thought like a child. Well, here it is. I didn't even know this said this. Argued like a child. And when I tell you, I, I, I'm almost having zero tolerance for it, you all. I'm just being honest. I'm just, I, help me, Jesus. Argue like a child. And now that I have become a man, and you know that means mature. That means mature. Yeah. That's when you know somebody has got a great level of mature, spiritual maturity. And even over themselves, their emotions when they don't get into that debating and arguing, egotistic, I'm right, you're wrong, I've researched, I've, I've, I've read the scriptures, but you're still wrong. See, folks don't want to hear that. Nope. But I'm not going to be in trouble with God. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I have finished with childish ways. My God. For now we see obscurely in a mirror, but then it will be face to face. This is Jesus. Now I know partly, then I will know fully, just as God has fully known me. Hallelujah. When we see him, amen, we shall be like him. But for now... Three things last, trust, hope, love. This is what we, we should pursue. Trust, hope, love. And the greatest of these is love. Pursue love. And I'm going to end there, you all. And I will come back on and continue this teaching. God bless you. Let's deal with our own minds and our own heart and our own sin, and our own pride. God bless you all. I love you.